Anna. Dear Acharya ji, two sample descriptions of Howard Rourke as, are as follows. One, I'm not capable of suffering completely. I never have. It only goes down to a certain point and then it stops. Second, I don't care whether you agree with me or not. He has said it so simply that it doesn't sound offensive. It sounds like the statement of a fact. These and many other descriptions of Rourke as an awakened being give the impression that it's been his nature all along without having acquired anything on the way. Good. So the question is, if indeed enlightenment is an innate gift, what chances do we seekers of truth have in ever coming near to anything that rock represents? Thank you for your guidance. No, Anna, no. Either Rand wants us to believe that Rourke is a freak of nature who didn't have to go through the tedious and rigorous spiritual process to be an awakened being. Or you could speculate that Rourke has had one or several capable teachers in the past. Don't forget that you meet Rourke when he is already 21. Either he is a freak of Prakriti. There are such cases possible. Where you are born so particularly conditioned that your tendency is not to be conditioned more, rather to give up the conditioning. It is possible. It is possible that a child is born with such an internal configuration, with such a typical, peculiar configuration of Sat Rajatam, that he is conditioned to get progressively deconditioned. It is possible. But the probability is one in a million, one in a billion. Such a student, such, such, a, such a candidate, such a, such a prodigy will not require too many teachers. He will move ahead on his own, being guided by his life experiences, seeking knowledge here, seeking clarity there. In fact, I forget it, but the Patanjali Yoga Sutras have a specific name for such a phenomena. The Yoga Sutras talk of the various methods of liberation. And then in between they say that one of the ways in which a person can get liberated is by being born in a configuration that is very suitable for liberation. But Anna, please, please forget all this. Because the probability of that happening, I say, is one in a million, one in a billion, one in a trillion, I do not know. It's a freak of nature if that happens. The others must go through some kind of spiritual discipline. So, for your purposes, it would be safe to imagine that Rourke has had several teachers in the past. Those teachers might not have been strictly spiritual teachers, but their teaching has had to be deeply spiritual at its core. Are you getting it? So let's say there is somebody who is teaching Rourke the trade of plumbing. Rourke has been into all these trades to eke out his livelihood. He has walked his way through college. So surely he would have learnt all these things from someone. So let's say there is somebody who is teaching him plumbing. Now it's possible that in the process of 
teaching plumbing to him. Several spiritual inputs were also indirectly delivered. Are you getting these things? Now, those things are not mentioned in the text. So you can only conjecture. But do not think that awakened beings drop from the trees or the skies. Spiritual rigor, discipline, education is an absolute necessity. In, in fact, even the text so very gloriously showcases us the relationship between Rourke and Cameron. If you will look closely at it, it is a beautiful Guru Shishya relationship. Rourke is not with Cameron merely to learn architecture. Look at their conversations. Cameroon is teaching life to Rourke. So Rourke has had teachers. Cameroon is probably the last of the living ones. Hmm? After Cameroon, Rourke probably does not need a teacher in flesh and blood. And it would be safe to assume that Cameroon is only the last teacher in an entire series of teachers. There might have been, there are most likely to have been a few teachers even before Cameroon in the life of Rourke. Hmm? None at Stanton whatsoever. <laughs> that is certain. Supranil. Dear Acharya Ji Pranam, then he quotes a conversation between Rourke and the Dean. Dean, you don't care what others think, and this might be understandable, but you don't even care to make them think as you do? Rourke, no. Dean, but that's monstrous. Rourke, is it? Probably. I can't say. So then Supranil is asking, self-assertion, it seems, is an act for the ego to confirm its own validity and superiority. But Rock feels no need for validation of qualification. How is that possible as we know that ego by its very nature is insecure? Won't that type of ego impart monstrosity to a nihilistic or narcissistic mind? Where is the fundamental difference? Kindly guide. But then that ego that you are seeing here in Rock is not at the center of a nihilistic or narcissistic mind. If a nihilistic or narcissistic mind emulates Rourke, then there is a problem. But when at the center of the mind is a Rourke-like ego, then the mind cannot be nihilistic. Are you getting it? The ego, the I, sits at the center of the mind. Correct? The I sits at the center of the mind and the quality of I decides the quality of the mind, the entire mental landscape. If the I is Rourke-like, then how can the mind be nihilistic or narcissistic? So that which you are hypothesizing is impossible. <coughs> 